Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, our country, but how we're going to fix both of them together and pass this freedom that we received onto the next generation. The content that I'm about to show you is chock full of nuts, quite literally. It's not the coffee, they're just crazy. The Democrats are having a bit of a chaos issue inside. For one side says everybody's racist, including the minorities, and the other side, the voice of reason in the room is the young Turks going, nope, maybe it's something else. Not kidding, wait for this. And then we're going to tie it all up with the Democrats saying openly, Kamala was great, she would have won if she was a white guy. Guys, we've entered the Twilight Zone. Everything will be linked. I always bring the receipts, of course. Share this with a fellow patriot who want, you want to see smile and have a heart that is so full of joy as we watch our political opponents descend into chaos and we just enjoy the freedom. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on because we are all about that freedom. We'd love to have you along for the ride. And with that said... Whew, I had to say that fast. Make sure you guys take advantage of the 10% discount we have store-wide. We took a get-out-of-a-jail-free card from the Monopoly box and gave it to our limited-time designs. They will only be available from November 1st to December 1st for that holiday season. You get 10% off by using the code 45-47. Yep, those are Trump's presidency numbers. I'm not even ashamed of it. And because they're limited time designs, you don't get them any other time of the year. You get two of them, you get free shipping. That's savings on savings and freedom and you look great. Come on guys, link in the description box below. Get that holiday shopping knocked out while you spread some freedom. And now let's get into the crazy because like literally my computer's exploding while it's just sitting there, sitting there. All right. Whew. Yeah, guys, when the Young Turks is the voice of reason in the room, we've gone off a cliff. So let's start with the crazy, and then we'll go into the normal, and this one, the TYT. So of course, we're going to go to The View. And I want you to listen to this exchange, because the Democrats have an opportunity. They can either realize that they went crazy, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, kind of chock full of nuts reference earlier, again, not the coffee, and they can moderate, or they can continue blaming blame everybody else and experience more losing. Let's continue and see where they're at at The View. And, and finally, we talk a lot about these different demographics and these assumptions of where they're going to go. Latinos in Texas, a, dis, a district that's 97 percent Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the misogyny. border crisis is on their doorstep. So, so, and they were begging people to care about it for years. We need to take sexism. some lessons. That's what that was. The lessons are not Knock, misogyny. knock. Who's there? Misogyny and sexism. It's a 95% Latino community. 75% of them went for Trump. Uh, misogyny and sexist. Obvious. So clear. What could it be? Couldn't be policies. No. Couldn't be that they're right on the border. No. They just don't like women and stuff. And men are better. Yep. Looks like it's going well. But now let's go to the reason, the voice of reason in the room. I can't believe I'm going to say the Young Turks. But we're going to dive into a Two little pieces here. This is a two minute clip I'm gonna splice up, but this includes a Democrat saying that Kamala would have won if she was a white guy. Let's go. What do you think went wrong in the Kamala Harris Democratic campaign against Trump here? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I thought she ran a pretty good campaign, but I don't know that she was her strongest candidate. Um, there's still probably a little antipathy towards a, a woman being president. Mm -hmm. um, and there's probably still some racial antipathy. Mm. Uh, you know, Barack won, Barack did fabulous, but it was Barack's election that brought it back about Donald Trump. Okay. And there were a lot of people that didn't like it and never did like it and didn't want to see it happen. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to see another African-American be president. So I think we still got a race problem and a gender problem. And to win, we should have had a white guy. I mean, people are going to be, going to be mad, but that's the facts. The demographics worked against us, I think, because Kamala ran a good campaign and she's smart and she's experienced. It didn't make enough of a difference. Okay, I'm just, you know what? You know what? I'm just going to set up camp on that for a second. Okay, so just so you're fully aware, let's just walk through this logic, because that's a sitting Democratic congressman. So race and gender played a role. Because Barack Obama, who I'm not sure if you guys know, is African American. He was elected by a vast majority of the population. And so because he was elected, that same population that elected him was so pissed that they elected him twice that now they said, not again, not Kamala Harris. Oh, no, no, no. And she's a woman. I mean, flat out, guys, as the Democratic sitting congressman just said, if we, we probably would have won if we just had a white guy. 
and we're the racist? Okay, okay, we're just gonna keep on going with that. Here comes the voice of reason. Anna Kasparian, who I swear to she is this close to jumping over to the middle or at least the right. Listen to this and how she responds because you guys are going to hear some familiar things that you've heard from yours truly in this one. Listen to this. Well, I think it's worth discussing the fact that Donald Trump actually managed to increase his support Ooh. among various groups of people, including uh, black males Ooh. and also uh, Latino voters, Arab Ooh. voters. Uh, now, let's get to the details on that. NBC News found Latino men were breaking for Trump by a 10-point margin. Their exit hmm. polling found Trump secured 54% of the male Latino vote support in comparison to Harris's 44%. Four years ago, Latino men backed Biden over Trump, 59% to 36%. Now, Trump's appeal to Latino men is largely economic. Okay, largely economic. And look, it's not just based on this one excerpt from this one piece. They've been saying it over and over and over again in poll after poll after poll. Economy, number one priority, economy, number one priority. It must be racism, it must be sexism. And no, no matter, they're telling you. No matter how many times they tell pollsters. Okay. I'm, I'm, I, uh, when you've got the progressives at the leftist network, the Young Turks saying they're screaming it's policy related and you go right to racism, sexism, and misogyny, you're done goofed, okay? Literally, the exasperation on her face, yeah. If my side was doing some stupid-ish like this, I'd be pretty exasperated as well. Let's go to Jake, who's going to say something that I think he saw on my show a couple times. I'm going to stick my flag in this one because it's going to sound real familiar. Uh, uh, online uh, Focus groups, whatever it might be, hey, it's the economy, stupid. Uh, they turn around and go, so you really want to protect undocumented immigrants? They're like, no, I don't know how much clearer do I, I, I need to be. Look, here's the problem with uh, not just Democrats, but people that are in Washington. Right here. They view people in buckets. And they think everybody in the bucket does the same thing. Is a monolith. Basically. Yeah, but that's not how it works in the real world. They, they're, you know what Latinos are? Uh, human? human beings. <laughs> yeah. That's like everybody else. I should really charge them like royalties or something, because I've been saying that exact same sentence for about two years now. It's 100% true. Which goes back to the main point. You saw the sitting congressman, the Democrat, say, yeah, we probably would have won with a white guy. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, you saw Sonny Hostin on The View say, well, it was sexism and misogyny. Easy peasy. It's easy to blame somebody else instead of saying, I suck. Yep. And then you got Jake Uger saying that the Democrats in Washington, D.C. look at everybody in buckets and demographics because they are collectivist. Holy crap. Cats and dogs are sleeping together. In this case... My channel and his channel are obviously saying the same thing because holy balls. Guys, there is a growing little fight that's happening right now about who's to blame and who's not to blame. Biden's gotten some. Racism's gotten a whole bunch. Sexism and misogyny's gotten a whole bunch. But good Lord Almighty, if you dare say it might just be the policies and you listen to the Young Turks who's going, y'all aren't listening to people, which again, they are the voice of reason in the room. I don't know. I got nothing for you. Enjoy losing. I'm enjoying winning. I will see you guys on the next one. Braden?